interesting. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I am here in the Hobo Studios. I'm here to talk to you about Fighter Fest. Fight fighters, ready? FTW. <laughs> so there's a pretty good tease of, of what I'm going to talk about. I'd like to thank some people for making my life fun. Norton. Yes. I think he was chatting with me every so often. This goes back to Impact. Yeah, I apologize for, for that one hiccup. They changed the time. I can't do anything about it. But AEW is still on time. But Norton, he won twice. And he earned, because he earned that six count. The mid card act. You start becoming a master of the air guitar. Toys for thoughts. You, sir, the only toy you need is your briefcase boombox.
buttocks. Thank you very much for guiding me in the right ways of YouTube. I will crawl out of here. Thank you, Zamoro. You win, sir, by dirty pin. And then finally, Big Smoke. You are a member of the Al Generico Band. Now let's get this show started so I can actually get some sleep. I had a some I had a busy day today. I managed to cash in my aluminum, but they've lowered the price of aluminum again. It's only thirty cents a pound. It's not good. I remember when I first started this racket, it was sixty cents a pound. <sighs> not good. I did pass my test though with flying colors, and I passed it with a little bit of wiggle room to spare. So I can just forget stuff. Well, I don't want to because I need as much wiggle room as I can. Because the rest of my coworkers are a bunch of nerds and geeks. Except for the, the, the one woman that shows off her bra strap. But that's enough about that. Um, yeah, like the one person like actually raised her hand when someone asked, Who got a hundred? One person had to raise their hand, and for some reason, I don't know, they were saying what the answers, the same, like, like going over the ones everyone got wrong. I think, oh, they're wrong. Unless they were only six. Well, no, because six would have gotten me an 80. I got an 83. Wait a second. How many did I get right? I, got, I, I had to get five wrong. So that means I got 25, right? Let's see here. 3 divided by 25. Nope, wrong way. I used to do sometimes forget that. It's 5 sixth. Yeah, it's 83 repeating. Hey, I'm just happy I passed. Although there's no celebrating. Although I did have a pizza and I had a little. Well, not bubbly to chase it with, but. Enough about this nonsense. Let's talk about some fight fighters. Ready? Fight. Maybe. But, um, so we start off again. AEW Fight Fighters Day 2. I don't know. This just. It just seemed like. Another episode of Dynamite. I'm not a fan. I'm, I'm slowly getting old to this. But I'm not a fan of, of AEW. I mean, just call it Dynamite. You can, you can skip Fighter Fest. Or you can have Fighter Fest. Just be a crowdless thing. AEW does the crowdless arena right. To the degree where they could have a pay-per-view. And it would feel like a pay-per-view without people there. With just their basic wrestlers there. This just seemed like another episode of Dynamite. They, they tried to... Oh, there's this, the old phrase, you can't polish a turd. Oh, someone actually did manage to polish a turd. Indeed. I don't know, it wasn't human. It's like... I think it was like Rhino or Lion or something. Or it was like a mix. This is... <laughs> I think they actually did do that Mythbusters 
Beavis and Butthead episode where they tried to lick toads and they of course know that that's stupid. They did polish a turd. Something else from Beavis and Butthead they did. And it was really fun. But yeah. Again, this just felt like AEW Dynamite. Um, so first match of the night, Private Party taking on Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page. And by the way, I'm going to wait about a week and I'm going to get myself a Young Buck shirt. So I don't know, I've been good about not guess, getting wrestling shirts for a while. But I don't know. I think I need a little color because all my shirts, I just realized this, they're all for the most part black, black and white. Pink, yeah, three. Gray. Yeah, that's black and white, black and white, black and white. Might as well be black and white. Gray and black. A mustard yellow. Purple and heather. So yeah, if I have, I just need a little splash of color there, I think. And honestly, the Young Buck shirt. I mean, only because I've seen El Phantasmo's video. This video intro is amazing. I'll tell you what, they put all their money. I can't believe El Phantasmo left Bullet Club to go to NXT. And now he's a San, Santo Ortiz. Or something like that. Saint Ortiz. And he runs the Mexican Lucha Cartel. Best way to put it. Enough about NXT, though. Yeah. Uh, they had their bash at the beach. I don't know. It seemed special when it was just on the network. Probably because they pulled all their stars out of house shows, but that's that's a whole other issue. Enough about this nonsense, though. Hangman on a page. And Kenny Omega take on private party. Kenny Omega starts off. Wow, this was a fun match. This was this was a good match. Uh, Kenny Omega, he's he, he's vicious. Can he becomes the every so often those that were in the Bullet Club in New Japan revert back to their New Japan style, or in, in this instance, Kenny Omega becomes the cleaner Kenny Omega. I mean, AJ Sal every so often reverts back. Oh, I hope I hope El Phantasma does that. Reverts back to vicious crotch stomping. El Phantasma. I saw that. That looked just vicious. But El Phantasma is great, though. He has such an amazing video package. And he took his mask off, too. Voluntarily, I think. I know for NXT it was voluntarily. But there's a whole Lucha core, Lucha something in. And then Mr. Lucha comes down and says, you gotta take that mask off. Or, or probably the Lucha cartel will get him. Ooh, it's lightning outside. I better hurry up before I lose power and run out of time. Um, so Kenny Omega turns into the cleaner. Vicious stomps. He's vicious to the one guy in private. I forget their names in private party. I, I just barely can remember those people in, um, in the Street Profits. And I get those two confused. I get to figure out FTRs, their individual names. I don't know. Uh, Paige gets tagged in. Takes out the other, takes out the other guy, and then he and Omega, uh, Omega just, um, um, Paige just chops, uh, Kenny just like slaps to the back, uh, and and then I'll tell you what, Hangman and Paige is an amazing match because he did a fall away, bridging slam, for the pin that was really good. Again with this, really good tag team work, good tandem tag team work. Page and Omega really work over the one guy in private party. And when it's private parties, because Mark Quinn eventually has his comeback uh, with the drop kicks, and then private party gets to do their double team moves. And very focused. Private party is a little bit more flashy um, than Page and Omega, but still it's pretty good. Uh, Page has been power bombed. Got to the outside. Page power bombed Quinn over the barricade. Wow, those. Barricades. You think with all the money they save from production costs that they could get decent barricades. They're using like El Super Cheapo bike racks that 
literally are bike racks. They're not even barricade things. It's a freaking bike rack. It's a cheap one too, because because they seem way too like. Because I lifted legitimate barricades like that. They're kind of heavy. I know these are some big uh, burly men, but I mean, I'm a pretty big, strong uh, guy myself. So it's always hard to say. Oh yeah, and then the other wrestling T-shirt I do need. I have my Southern Pro Lucha Libre. That's white. I do want to find that Parts Unknown shirt one day. One day, it'll show up to Hot Topic. Who knows? <laughs> Heavy sell Parts Unknown. That's a good wrestling T-shirt too. But um, enough about T-shirts. I want to get. Uh, I literally like he they page power bomb Quinn over the barricade. And somehow they managed to break the barricade. The barricade doesn't do freaking anything. If you wanted, if you were a fan and really wanted to get to the wrestlers, that barricade, folks, is not stopping you. In fact, it no longer deserves the barricade song. No more barricade song for, for that El Chipo barricade. It's, it's ter terrible. Um, then there was a double Spanish fly. That was... Amazing. Oh, Spanish fly. She just Spanish fly, standing Spanish fly, super S Spanish fly, or the avalanche Spanish fly, and the pile driver, and the Canadian destroyer. Those are the four wrestling moves that need to be utterly protected at all times, because everyone now is doing the Spanish fly, and everyone's kicking out of it. I remember when Johnny Mundo did the Spanish fly. Granted, it was a setup for, for the uh, Starship Pain. But I'll tell you what. A Spanish fly doesn't do anything to anyone. It used to be. like if someone hit the Spanish fly, people would go, Whoa! Now, now it's lost its magic. I don't know. Then they did some yay boos. Uh, Cassidy did a step over the rope in Siguri. Um, the other guy does the flippy thing. Oh, no. Kenny Omega did the monkey flip. The one the one guy in Private Party was there. Uh, the other guy in Private Party. So here's this guy, Private Party. Other Private Party gets monkey flipped onto said guy. Hangman and Page picks him up. Powerball bombs him on his partner. It's always good to see. Uh, again, Page. It's just so good. Uh, then there was this. Then Private Party hit this. Then then the comeback though. This is the only thing. There's just way too many comebacks in this. Um, Private Party hit a springboard flatliner onto the stage. That was actually be pretty amazing. I guess it's okay. And then Paige eats a shooting star press. Oh, Kenny Omega makes a save, and it was the. Super sit out power bomb into the lat into the last call. The right team won eventually. Uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page win. I'll tell you what, it was still a, it was, for all the bad things I said about what they did. It was still a good surf and turf match. <sighs> and then Lance Archer and Joey Janela. I thought this was going to be a no DQ match because I'll tell you what, the, the one issue I'm slowly beginning to have with AEW is the referees are very, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not equal. Inconsistent. Um, I'll get to that. Uh, Archer uses Sunny. Poor Sonny catches a weapon, throws him on Joey Janela to start off. I'm figuring this is a squash match, but no, nah, I guess I was wrong. Um, Joey Janela comes back with some drop kicks through the ropes, to the big splash, and he got the table. The referee shows him, no, 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 no table. And then, so actually the referee didn't say anything about the table. So Joey Janela grabs a chair. Now the chair... The ref says, no, 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 Joey Janela, you cannot use a chair. 
I will disqualify you if you use the chair, but it's okay to set up a table. Uh, again, it's inconsistent. It's, at least in WWE, if they use the table, they use the announce table, which is already set up, so at least you can say, okay, it's a pre-existing thing. They, they didn't have to set up the announce table. It was already there. Makes sense. You, however, shame on you, wrestler. You actually set that table up. Although I can see why the ref wouldn't DQ Archer. Because Joey Janela did set up the table. And Joey Janela, you, sir, of all people, know the rule of tables. If you set up the table, you will be going through said table. So, Joey no, had no chair. Um, Archer begins to choke Joey Janela. Um, Jake Roberts is just, like, wandering around the ringside carrying his, his, his... I don't even know if there's a snake in there anymore. But he just has a bag with, like, stuff in it. A black bag with stuff in it. And I'll tell you what. Jake better be careful. One of two things was happening to Jake. Either one, he has coronavirus. And he had a fever because he was sweating. I mean, the, his hair was drenched in water. You could see sweat all over the top of his shirt. I mean, he looked like he was, like, running around in the heat. And I know Daly's place is actually fairly cool because it gets a nice river breeze, so it's not that hot. I mean, the wrestlers were sweating, but it wasn't, it, they, it wasn't pouring off of them like it's been in the past. But so either one, Jake Roberts has coronavirus and really shouldn't have been ringside. Or two, Jake, I don't want to see you die on TV. Don't stroke out on TV. Please, please, please don't. Because that, that would make me sad. <laughs> he, he would probably say, he's dead. That would probably be it. But yeah, he was wandering on the ring. Um, Archer eventually does this cl clubbing blows, the chest and back of Joey Janela. And Joey Janela starts his comeback after the beal. Um, he... he the he reversed the blackout, and then of course Jake began to distract the ref. So Sonny Kiss did a flip onto Jake Archer again. Jake should know better. He realized that, and then because, and I understand why this isn't a DQ because Archer's not the one to set up the table, but Archer sent Joey Janelle through the blackout through the table, and then just threw him back in the ring and pinned him. Again, there's just no consistency with what happens. And I understand Archer did not set up the table, but still, I don't know. It's still an okay match. It was actually, yeah, it was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. And then probably this was the best match of the night. It was the eight-man tag... Oh, oh, wait. Before that, there was a Darby Allen moment. I don't know. Darby Allen did, like, a coffin drop into, like, a thing of, like, foam cubes. That kind of looks fun. Remember the days when WWE used to have that little warning, don't try this at home? I'll tell you what. Doing a, doing a coffin drop into a pit full of foam? I tell you what. That looks pretty fun. I think there was the time I did the back bump into, like, the pile of pillows at work. That was also kind of fun, too. That's another story, though. Because, yeah. Um, actually, at my one job, I think it was very quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story. We had way too many pillows. Those holiday pillows. I worked in a retail store for, for, for a home, home goods store. Screw them. But we had way too many pillows, and... I think we just said, you know what? We're just going to get all these pillows. We put so, we put uh, pallets on the ground. So while well, there's no space, this is the very back. We'll just put p pallets down so the pillows aren't on the ground. They're on top of pallets. We'll just dump all the pillows there because we had a ridiculous amount of pillows at the time. And I think it was holiday season, Christmas time. So we had like every kind of monogram Christmas pillow you could freaking imagine. 
So I had to get something off the shelf and realized the pillows were in the way. So I, had to I did the bad, I, I did the bad thing. I climbed up the shelves, which were like bolts into the ground anyway, so they weren't going to go anywhere. I got one I, I kind of, because I had, I did actually have to get one specific pillow that was, we actually had space for. So I think I was reworking the pillow wall that day and, and I said, oh, we have space for these pillows. I'll make, I'm going to get this stuff out. Um, I realized I couldn't get down. I threw the pillows on the ground top of pillows. Not going to hurt anything. Not going to decrease the value. And I was looking up there, hanging. I'm like, oh, how do I get down? Like, let's have some fun. Oh, back bump onto the pillows. That was fun. I was almost tempted the next day because I also work the freight. I was tempted to give the one guy 20 bucks and the one guy 50 bucks. The one guy I gave 20 bucks to would, would suplex. The get guy I gave 50 bucks to onto the pillows just for my entertainment. And they would have done it too. Darn, that's just one. We had some fun back then before that cunt showed up. You didn't hear that from me though. But yeah, so Darby Allen, again, he's not doing any public service announcement good by making coffin drops look fun. Because some idiot kid's going to, or, or superhuman, is going to do a coffin drop onto, like, barbed wire and realize it hurts. You realize the, f I think the, f again, like the high dive, half the terror of the high dive is there's a very long delay before you go from the top to the bottom. So, again, with a coffin drop, again, not so much with the pillows because that was, like, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, maybe four feet. So that's, that's a pretty quick fall. But yeah, you start falling like 30 feet in the air. It takes some time. Even the gravity is helping you. You have that, that and that's why I think I have that semi fear of heights only because I knew if I fell, you have especially off of any tall building you too have i mean depending on if it's like the imp extreme cases the empire state building it takes a couple minutes before you hit the ground and you're just seeing things flash by you that would be the most terrifying part not the fact that you're going to die once you hit the ground on impact but just realizing over the span of a couple of minutes, I'm gonna die and everything's passing me. That's why I hope I go, that's quick. Again, I think there was a TV show, Thousand and One Ways to Die. They figured out the best way to die is when you're 90 years old in your bed, surrounded by loved ones, and you just go quietly into the night. That probably is the best way to go, folks. Let's either that way or something really quick. Like getting decapitated in a motorcycle accident. Oof. Instant. Lights out. He was in an accident. Felt no pain. He feels no pain. It's like, yes, he was in a horrific accident. He doesn't feel a thing, though. And that's the two ways I'd prefer to go. Either very quick, like decapitated in an auto accident. And what we have is Tash shows up. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. And Taz, I'll tell you what, Taz has, has some real balls to do this. He brings out Brian Cage. He gives Cage, he, he gifts Cage the FTW belt from ECW. Whoa. That was awesome. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. That FTW belt actually looks a lot better than the TNT Championship. I don't know what it is, but Brian, so it might be belt for belt. We'll see what happens. Um, and again, I'm not really keen on them doing this, but Fight for the Fallen, I know it follows. Um, it's because here in Daytona Beach, they used to have the... I, the CEO game, sh the game show or video, video game convention come to town. 
And then they'd have the wrestling show and CEO sponsored and by CEO games. They sponsored it uh, first by New Japan, then AEW. Kind of all done through Kenny Omega. And then they would go off to have Fighter Fest in Jacksonville the next week. So I think Fighter Fest, that was the free one. And I didn't get zonked for that. Because that's when, remember when AEW like first started, though. But then I think the next pay per view by AEW, they said, Get out of here. And they zonked me with a copyright violation. The first time they didn't. The second time they said, F you, mother effer. Um, you're, you're zonked. But so Taz comes out, gifts Brian Cage the FEW belt. Again, a lot better looking belt than the TNT Championship belt. So that was pretty cool. Brian Cage looks kind of shocked. <laughs> he actually looked confused. He's like, the hell's this? So then probably in the match of the night, we had the Butcher, the Blade, the Lucha, and the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix taking on FTR and the Young Bucks. This was amazing. This was a showcase match. I don't care what Jim Cornette says. I'm going to give it the reading I am because this was all except for the ending. And I'm not going to poo-poo the ending because it should it should have been different in my mind, but I'll get to that. Uh, starts off Matt Jackson and Pentagon. Uh, Pentagon first takes off his glove, threw it. He did the he did the, the, the dual challenge because let me go. He takes off the gloves and goes, Cerro! Miedo! Zero fear. Um, but now Catch gets tagged in. Uh, again, FTR is all fists, no flips. A little, little short rope, short rope, the short, the short rope toss into the cross chop to the neck. That was great. Again, the double team by FTR is working over the arm. They do this so classically. They're so good. They might be one of the teams that always gets a cheeseburger. Unless they really screw something up. But I'll tell you what, the work they do is just, again, even the announcer said, it's just like the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Ole and Arn Anderson um, goes back to the, the Fabulous Boys. The Freebirds. All the tag team double teams that they would do. Instead of having five seconds, now they have ten seconds to work people over. Or, yeah, ten seconds to work people over. Again, just what they do is so good, though. Working over the arms, coming off the top, the double stomp on the arm. Um, uh, uh, Wilder held held the other guy down, so this so, so Cash could uh, just stomp on the arm again. Working over the arm, really good stuff. Uh, Penta and Ray they just start flying. Then the Lucha flips, but FCR fists. That doesn't sound that great, but that's okay. Uh, Matt Matt tags himself in. Um, he and Ray they do some like a mate. Uh, yeah, Matt Matt and the Bucks get in. Uh, Ray takes in the blade. Bucks double team the blade. This was actually really fast and very fast action until Matt flips into the turnbuckle. That was a trope. People would just people are just like diving head first, the top turnbuckle. I know it's soft like a pillow, not necessarily something you really want to do that. Uh, so yeah, the butcher and butcher and blade then do their tag team work. They work over Matt Jackson pretty good. That was good to see again. Pentagon does the springboard splash. The ref has absolutely no control again. <sighs> In this match, the only thing I have is the referees have absolutely no clue what they're doing. The referees... Referees in WWE, Impact, Ring of Honor, have very little to do as far as the outcome of the match. Besides besides doing the pin attempt count, Asking the guy if they wants to quit or saying no, I have to count one, two, three, four. Oh, oh, okay, okay. 
you have a five count. I count to five. You better let go. I'm going to DQ you. That's the job of the referee. And in WWE and NXT, along with Impact and probably Ring of Honor, they do that really well. Chikara is a whole different beast. The referees will get involved. They, they do whatever. But and in Chikara, you kind of expect that because they lead, at least they lead up to that spot. In New Japan, with the exception of Red Shoes, the referees literally are there to like just say, nope, you tapped out, do the 20 count, or count to three. Red Shoes, ugh, he gets involved, but it's so non-meaningful to the match. Um, when there's a rope break, he might actually pull someone off. He might yell at someone, but that leads to a distraction. Um, he, he gets distracted by Yano all the time, which is good. So, so he, he gets involved that way, but it's so few and far between and it flows with the match. The AEW refs just look inept. Like they don't know what their, their freaking job is. Because the referee looked confused as to who was in. One person would pin and it's like, no, I don't, yeah, switch. Very bad at tracking traffic are AEW referees. Even Aubrey's, we'll, we'll get to her later. But again, it was a super fast paced match. Again, I hate the fact that they say the macho elbow. Only one person did the macho elbow. That was the macho man. Uh, Nick Jackson and Ray Phoenix did the bouncing off the ropes in tandem. To, and uh, Nick eventually hit a Huracrana, then there was a super kick into a bridging German suplex. And again, super fast paced match, the Macho Elbow. Then a super kick party! That's always fun to say. And, and then it became spot fist time, and really they just, everyone hit kind of like the spots or double team spots, so it wasn't too bad. And by quick, uh, it was a shatter machine by the Butcher and Blade. Oh, there's a shower machine done by one person from Young Bucks, one person from FTR. And then they did the Meltzer driver, and the opposite members did that. Um, Cash eventually got pulled out of the ring, though, by Ray Phoenix. Then there was the double suplex and the double splash by the Young Bucks and FTR. Uh, Ray goes flying off the top rope. Matt and Pentagon, they start to trade blows for a while. Then there was a Canadian destroyer onto a pile of people use, using the ropes. That was amazing. I have never seen a Canadian destroyer used like that before. As long as, as, long as the, that's safe for big matches, I'm okay with it. If they start to use that every AEW match, it's going to get old really quick. Uh, then, there was, then there was a face miscue. Uh, the one guy, Cash, got super kicked by accident. Uh, then it was the LP driver by the Lucha Brothers. The Butcher and Blade actually won a match along with the Lucha Brothers. This, even though for my criticism of more so the referee than anything else, during the match itself, this was a filet mignon match. What I don't like happened at the end, and if it was up to me, I'd change it a little bit. The heels go off. I'm fine with that. They still have the car keys. Heels are celebrating. They got to win. FTR, they shook hands with the Young Bucks. Because the Young Bucks cost FTR the match, FTR should have knocked their, their heads off and set up for a feud that way. At least so it makes sense. They'll probably just do some talking talking garbage saying, oh, you cost us this match, now we want to fight you. No, you want to fight you. No. As, as soon as like the hand goes out, it should have said, you're number one in my book. Punch! You cost us the match. That's the only thing I wanted to see different. Um, big Swole. So, that's my critique. It wasn't part of the match. Uh, 
Again, they could do that a lot better. And then Big Swole comes in and realizes that she's served, served papers. She tells the one lawyer, hey, don't you hear fax machines, snail mail? You made me drive three and a half hours, which means she probably lives out in either Tallahassee or north of Savannah, Georgia. Or Titusville, Florida. Because, yeah, Tallahassee is three and a half hours that way. North of Savannah is three and a half hours from there. And Titusville is three and a half hours from there. Because you can't go you can't go east because that's like the ocean. That's like when you start like talking about like 4,000 miles across the pond. So, no. So, yeah, that's okay. Um, then we have Nyla Rose taking on Kenzie Page, the original mean girl, who also looked to put on that Krona 30, along with Kylie King. Again, Krona 30, I hate, to, I hate to say it, folks. Krona 30 is a thing. I'm still working off mine. I still have a good chunk to go. And pizza's not helping. And not sleeping is not helping either. Um, for the most part, this was a squash match. I kept saying, the, the, the fun thing about this, keep, keep saving, it's not, not in a mellow chair. He brings his own lawn chair. I'm still impressed with the fact that they still make like the old, the old fashioned lawn chairs. Uh, I wonder if there has to be some nickel and dimes where you got that from. I know there's a couple, I think there's a couple of them here in Daytona. I think every so often it's super target. They have like the retro lawn chairs too. You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones with like the most uncomfortable straps ever. Uh, so start of this match, Paige has a dumb thing. She tries to clothesline. Nyla Rose, yeah, that's not happening. She's met with a headbutt. Oh, she runs right into a clothesline. Nyla Rose headbutts her. Kelly King tried a little bit better. She did a she did, she did a duck under go behind. Tried to sleep her. Yeah, that wasn't working. Uh, Kenzie Page, the original bad girl, got used as a weapon. Um, it was a power bomb onto each other. Nyla Rose wins squash match. It was, it was okay, I guess. It's a can of soup. I mean, once you saw who Nyla Rose was going to face, you know it was going to be a squash match. Then she came out with the announcement that she's going to have a, a manager. They're going to bring another manager to AEW. All managing wrestling. Who could they really bring? Which manager's quitting? Which manager's moving up? Who's coming out of reset? Unless Vicky Guerrero shows up. That would be a bad match. And then Colt. Oh my god! What the hell happened to Colt Cabana's side? Dude, it looked like he broke a pelvic bone. Or like tore, tore hip tendons. He was like thoroughly bruised on the whole side of his body. Ugh. I think when my friend Matt showed me his torn pectoral muscle, it was all purple. I mean, it literally looked like that. I've never seen that much bruising. I don't think I've even been bruised that much. You know what? I don't think I've ever been bruised that much. I think except for once. Was it? Was it? I think just the once. Actually, maybe twice. And I had to deal with my knee. So I know it's a thing when, like, it goes from, like, purple to black to, like, blue and yellow. Once you see the, the blue and yellow, you know you screwed something up. But, yeah, that was so, so Colt, what the fuck happened to you? Um, then it was, a, again, stay away from the hobos in Jacksonville, especially the female hobos. They're, they're a little on the rough side there, Colt. Um, looks like Twisted Pixie got to Colt Cabana. And then we had the Dark Order take on SCU. This was a, this was a fun match. Uh, Stu Grayson, classic start. Headlock to the ropes. 
to arm drag to arm lock by Christopher Daniels. I knew something was screwing this match because Christopher Daniels did not take off his shirt for the whole match. So I know once that happened, once I saw Christopher Daniels leave the shirt, I'm like, Pfft. yep, SCU's not winning. Christopher Daniels already mailed it in. Uh, Christopher Daniels had, came in, had a tilt to back breakers. Always good to see. Uh, then the drop to hold into the ropes, like a reverse 619. Uh, Scorpio Sky came in. Uh, Cole eventually got in, hit some punches and basic moves. He actually pulled off a hip attack. So either he hit him with the opposite hit. That's a police car in the background. I should be used to that by now. Again, people have been people have been setting off fireworks though, like well past Fourth of July. So it's like the eighth already, and I'll get that in a moment. Um, it's probably my friend. I said, "Yeah, I wish I could be celebrating with you." Hope she says something salacious so I can see say something even more salacious. Oh, what do you mean celebrate with you? What would you do? How many times would I orgasm? I'd be like three. Oh, wait a second. I didn't mean that to get on there. Oops. Um, let's see here. So drop toll into the ropes. So this guy gets in. Colt does some punches. Does some stomps. The hip attack. Sue Grayson eventually pin attempts. Um, Colt eventually stops. Runs in. So this guy does a comeback. The liver kick. A neck breaker to poor Colt. Colt, that hurts. Maybe it was a liver kick or something. That makes. I forget what side it was on. But yeah, liver kicks. Dude, they're vicious. There's nothing there but liver to stop you. Like, because the liver's right beneath the rib cage. So yeah, you, you kick the liver. You're like, <coughs> oh. Um, Brody Lee comes in, beats up Kazarian a little bit. And they're in spot fest, typical, typical AEW fashion, spot fest time. And again, there goes the barricade. Eventually, they softened up uh, Christopher Daniels enough where they let Colt get the pin. Dark Order wins. It's a cheeseburger of a match. Yeah, I just wanted to, to send her some, some, some kissy faces. Um, and Big Swole shows up. <laughs> she dropped the weird F you. Whoa. TNT allows the F word. Whoa. She dropped the F you and then threw a paper ball at the, at the nose of Britt Baker. And she acted like she got like punched in the face. And then there's some black guy, fa uh, no, uh, some black guy being security. And then uh, Rebby was there, like fanning her with palms. <laughs> she says, Who are you, Jesus Christ? Oh! She says, I ain't Jesus. F you. Whoa! Big swole. It's not a way to impress your newest employer. Then we get to the main event. Um, yeah, so yeah, that previous match was a cheeseburger. I said that because that was a long pause. Then we got to Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho. Um, Cassidy starts off. He flies at Chris Jericho. And now does a big splash. Orange Cassidy is actually rather energized for this match. Uh, Chris Jericho then counters some flippy thing into a Boston Crab. Not the Lion Tamer. Lion Tamer is when like, you're literally resting on your neck in a really awkward position. Boston Crabs when he just sits on your back. Um, then cross the ropes. Chris Jericho again distracts Aubrey, who has AEW refitis, because she obviously did not see the fact that that the uh, Ortiz and Santana was there. So Ortiz just mad balls Orange Cassidy in the back. Um, there was a couple roll up cradles from Cassidy. Uh, Chris Jericho and again he went flying into the turnbuckle. Cassidy got tossed into the barricade. Uh, Chris Jericho does the 
the backbreaker stretch and that shot to the ribs. And then this is this is what upsets me. Chris Jericho puts in the abdominal stretch. So he has him stretched out and he has the free hand. Everyone knows this free hand over here, because because this is hooked here. This free hand, he's he's inching his way over the ropes. Aubrey should know better. Um, so Chris Jericho grabs the ropes. And then Aubrey literally stares at his hand. Chris Jericho stares at her, and he lets go. That should have been a rope break. She should have counted to five. Chris Jericho should have left it there for four seconds, broken the hold, punched him, did it again if he really wanted to. No, so he still has him. He has the arm stretch. Grabs the ropes again. He starts pulling it, and really obvious rope shaking and head shaking and body shaking. And, and rough Aubrey just like slaps his hand saying, hey, let go. So he let go. But he still has in the abdominal stretch. And he does it a third time. Yes, I'm going to shake this rope even more violently so everyone can see I am cheating. And then rough Aubrey like kicks his hand away. No count. Boo. Boo. Boo, Ref Aubrey. Yeah, she's very becoming, very quickly becoming Aubrey Red Lips. Because I don't know. She's a screwy ref. All those refs in the AEW are screwy. Again, it should have been, it should have been a five count, and Chris Jericho should have broke, he should have held on for four seconds, broken the hold, punched him a little bit, put the hold back on, cheat again if he, if he wanted to. He could do it all. He could, Go to the, do what they do classically. Let use all four sides of the ring so everyone can see what you're doing, and or, or what you've done. After he breaks it up, hey, listen, this is the second time, okay? One, two, three. The third time, I understand like the ref kicking the hand away, because then if Chris Jericho like, like punched him a little bit, went to the other side, put it back on, grabbed it, it's like okay, I've I've warned you enough. Yeah, kicks the hand away. I can understand that. But Ref Aubrey does not know the rules of being an official in professional wrestling. Boo. I hate doing this, too, because Aubrey's kind of cute. Boo, Aubrey. But she's nowhere near as cute as Ref Jess is, though, in, in WWE. Ref Jess is cute. Oh, yeah. Do dirty. I just do dirty things to Aubrey, but Ref Jess I'd, I'd cuddle with afterwards. Yeah. You didn't hear me say that. Um, then there was the sweet shin music followed by a super kick. Pull a little swerve. Uh, Cassidy gets out of the way of some attack. The pride, pride and powerful throw. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, the inner circle gets, gets jumped on. Eventually, the best friends come out because... Uh, I think since Ortiz likes to cheat, he just threw he just threw <laughs> threw a ball of orange juice in the eyes of Orange Cassie. That's things that's fairly acidic and sticky too. So there's orange juice on the ring. Then he has the best. Not me. I don't know me. He had the best cheaters look ever. Oh, Ortiz is so good. I mean, Ref Aubrey could have DQ'd them, or at least say, "Hey, you two. You're out of here. But no, she didn't do anything. She just stood there and took it. I wonder if she just is quiet and just takes it in bed. Oh, that's terrible. Demon, wait, I'm not monetized anyway. <laughs> um, there's no DQ. Eventually, uh, the, the Judas effect. It is what it was. Chris Jericho won. Chris Jericho should have won. Hate to do this to you, Chris Jericho. I'm dumb great at this match. Aub <laughs> Ref Aubrey actually brought this match down. Sorry. It's just a ham sandwich. That was AEW Fighter Fest. Again, it just seemed like it was a good... Dynamite. I mean, just your average dynamite. 
So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Uh, just to remind you guys, I'm going to get myself ready for editing process. Put my feet up and tranquil a little bit. Um, again, I'll remind you that I have one more show. I'm off Thursday. Uh, Friday night, SmackDown. I'm off Saturday. I think I might actually get to the gym Saturday, too. That would be good. And Sunday, I'm off. And you'll see me again Monday next week. It's going to be a full week, folks. So I'll see you then. Everyone else.